This is the sixth of the six videos on information treatments as a policy intervention. In this video, I will discuss an example of a case four information treatment from our topology. This is the case in which households are provided with periodic information over an extended period, and the agency has the explicit objective of changing households' behavior in a particular way. To illustrate this type of information treatment and its effectiveness in changing households' behavior in one specific location, I will summarize a new paper by Marcella Jamie and Frederick Carlson. The paper is entitled Social Norms and in Information Diffusion in Water Saving Programs, Evidence from a Randomized Field Experiment in Columbia. To illustrate this type of information treatment and its effectiveness in changing households' behavior in one specific location, I will summarize a new paper by Marcella Jaime and Frederick Carlson. The paper is entitled Social Norms and in Information Diffusion in Water Saving Programs, Evidence from a Randomized Field Experiment in Columbia. The policy intervention investigated was to provide information in a household's water bill about the amount of water used by the household's neighbors and to compare this to the household's own water use. This information was updated monthly and included in households' water bills for one year. The goal of the information treatment was to promote water conservation, that is to reduce households' water use. The experiment was conducted in Jericho, a town with a population of about 13,000 in central northwestern Columbia. The water utility in Jericho provides piped water services to 1,857 households in the urban portion of Jericho. To give you a visual image of the study location, let me show you a few pictures of the town. This is a picture of Jericho looking down into the valley from the side of a nearby mountain. Lovely place to do research, don't you think? Here's a picture of the town center. This picture shows some of the housing along a street in Jericho. These houses are typical of those owned by the researchers sample households. Before I describe Dr. Jaime and Professor Carlson's research study in more detail, I want to say a few things about water conservation as a goal of behavioral change in the wash sector. The average monthly household water use in Jericho is about 15 cubic meters per month. The average tariff paid by customers in this town is low, about 22 U.S. cents per cubic meter. Water utility officials are selling water below the cost of service and they feel households are using too much water. One policy option would be to increase tariffs to cost recovery levels. This would send a better signal to households about the cost of providing piped water services. If prices were higher, household water use would shift closer to the socially optimal level. This improved pricing policy would thus conserve water, but as we have seen, raising water tariffs is often seen as politically infeasible. So an information treatment that results in water conservation would be welfare enhancing because household water use is higher than socially optimal. Water conservation also reduces utilities' cost, and this is financially beneficial to the water utility. Thus, in Jericho, if the information treatment reduces water use, it may increase economic benefits and reduce financial losses. This is the second best solution compared to increasing tariffs because it does not send the proper signal to the utility to increase its production efficiency. But water conservation is not always welfare enhancing. In some locations, the benefits of increased household water use may be greater than the cost of service. In such a situation, an information treatment that encouraged water conservation would actually cause economic losses by driving water use farther away from the socially optimal level. The research design of this study follows closely the design used by Paul Ferraro and his co-authors in their research on information treatments in Atlanta, Georgia. If you took our 2014 MOOC, you will recall that we discussed Professor Ferraro's research in the materials on household water demand. Similar to Professor Ferraro, Dr. Jaime and Professor Carlson collaborated closely with a local water utility in Jericho, which provided the research team with access to customers' billing records. The sample frame for this experiment included all of the local utility's 1,857 residential customers with working meters. 
In total, 1,548 households were contacted and 1,311 households decided to participate in the survey. The treatment group consisted of 656 households that received the information on social norms. 655 households did not receive the information treatment and served as controls. A baseline survey was conducted in December 2012 to collect socioeconomic and demographic information from sample households. Households that were interviewed in this baseline survey were randomly allocated to either the treatment or control group. The information treatment was provided to the treatment households from January through December 2013. An ex post survey was conducted in April 2014. This ex post survey updated the socioeconomic information in the baseline survey and also collected information on household social networks. Next, I want to describe the information treatment in more detail. Households in the treatment group received a personalized report about their water use and how it compared to their neighbor's water use. They also received a message that encouraged them to conserve water. This is an example of the information received in graphical form. The top figure shows each household its own water use, the water use of efficient neighbors, and the average water use of all neighbors. These social norm reports were delivered to treatment households each month for one year, starting in January 2013. The basic idea behind this information treatment is that individuals will conform to the behavior of others. For example, if a household is informed that it is using twice as much water as its neighbors, it will want to reduce its water use to be closer to the social norm of water use in its neighborhood. There are different explanations as to why an individual would want to conform to social norms. An individual may feel guilt to using more water than neighbors, or they may seek social rewards or acceptability by conforming to what others are doing. Another explanation is that an individual may not have complete information about the optimal quantity of water to use. Knowing what its neighbors are doing may help a household determine the right amount of water use for its members. In this experiment, there are two ways that households may obtain information about neighbors' water use. The first is from the information included in the treatment household's water bills. This is termed the direct effect of the information treatment. The second is, the treatment, is that treatment households may talk to neighbors about the information they receive. So, even if a household is not part of the treatment group, it may receive information from a neighbor that does. Also, a treatment household that receives social norm information in their water bill may also receive information from a neighbor who wants to discuss the information they've heard about social norms in the neighborhood. This is termed an indirect or spillover effect. The research team tried to estimate both the direct and indirect effects of the social norm information treatment. Before I present the results of this randomized field experiment, let me tell you a little more about the socioeconomic and demographic characteristics of the sample households. Average household income was about $257 U.S. dollars per month. Most households in Jericho had already been through the demographic transition. Average household size was 3.3 persons. The average house had about seven rooms. 21% of the sample households had a garden. However, household water use for households with and without a garden was almost the same. Now let's turn to the results of this randomized field experiment. The research team found that the provision of social norms information decreased water use in the treatment households by about 5 to 6 percent during the first year following the intervention. There was also a statistically significant but short-term spillover effect. Interestingly, the research team concluded that the indirect spillover effects do not seem to result from the social and geographic proximity of household social networks. This figure shows the average direct monthly treatment effects over the 12 months of the experiment for the targeted households with working meters. The dashed lines show the 95% confidence levels. This next figure shows how the combined direct and indirect effects of the information treatment decline over time. Still, at the end of the 12-month experiment, the combined treatment effect for all households is about 
Again, the dashed lines are the 95% confidence intervals. The research team also analyzed the characteristics of the households most likely to reduce their water use in response to the social norms information. Households living in older dwellings reduced their water use by 6% more than households living in new dwellings. Interestingly, households that prior to the campaign believed they were using less water than their neighbors, but in fact were using more, decreased their water use to a greater extent, 12% more than households who believed they were using more water than their neighbors. The researchers found that the effect of information treatments was only significant for households with high water use and for high income households. Both groups decreased water use by about 10% compared to baseline. This last finding strikes me as particularly good news. One might be worried that the social norms information would pressure households with low water use to reduce their water use even further, possibly below the socially optimal level. But this does not seem to be the case. In conclusion, the size of the direct effect of the information treatment found in this experiment in Columbia are very similar to the results from a growing number of such studies in the United States. Almost everyone is finding short-run direct effects of about 5% or less. To put the results of this field experiment in perspective, in this location, the social norms information treatment reduced the average water use of a treatment household from about 15 to 14 cubic meters per month. The cost savings to the utility in terms of current operations expenditures from an effect of this size would be minimal. This is because the majority of the operating expenses, such as labor, are relatively fixed in the short run. However, the cost savings to the water utility could be significant if the information treatment resulted in a delay of capital investments and capacity expansion. This is because such investments are so capital intensive. Of course, the design and implementation of such information campaigns would cost money. It's not obvious a priori whether the benefits would exceed the costs. One would need to do the cost-benefit analysis. An important question in such a cost-benefit analysis is how long the effects of the information treatment would last, even if it was always included as part of the water bill. We don't have much information on long-run effects of such information treatments. It is possible that households would become less sensitive to social norms information over time. One final point. In another paper, the researchers investigate whether this social norm information treatment caused a spillover effect on household electricity use. They found that electricity use fell by 9% among treatment households that had low water use before the information treatment. 